starting our live feed this morning. And I'm going to try to see how I'm going to do this. Because every week, whenever it first starts out, the picture that it puts on there makes me look like I've got my mouth wide open with some sort of weird look on it. So I'm going to try to do, try to get that thing to go a little different this week. Um, we're going to start out this morning in the book of Zechariah, starting at uh, chapter 3. Zechariah, um, chapter 3, starting at verse 1. And Zechariah can be a little bit hard to find. But it's in there, I promise you. It says, and verse 3 says, And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Now, when I was thinking about that, I was looking and thinking, you know, in this life that we have right now, the way things are set, it doesn't matter who we are or where we are, the high priest, doesn't matter where we are with God, in front of God, we're going to have Satan, some of his angels, there to resist us, to accuse us, to try to make us less than what we are, to try to make us less effective, to try to make us look bad, feel bad, so that we cannot perform what God has for us to do. He's going to come against us, and he's going to try to bring us down and tell us, you don't measure up. You can't be. You can't be a child of God. You don't measure up. Don't be spreading your word because you don't know the word because you ain't good enough. Verse 2 says, And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuked thee. Now wait a minute. That gets a little bit hairy, doesn't it? The Lord said, The Lord rebuked thee. That's God the Son saying, God the Father rebuked thee. Okay? To Satan. That's Jesus saying, The Father rebuked thee. O oh, Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Is not the this a brand plucked out of the fire? He's talking about the person there. He's talking about Joshua. He's talking about saved people as we get further into that. The brand plucked out of the fire, okay? Even though we may be burned on one end, God saves us out. We're not destroyed, okay? We'll get in hot spots in this life. But we're plucked out. God is, he's, Jesus is here to save us, okay? No matter what we're accused of or what's going on, he's going to take care of us. Now, Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. Now, that filthy garments, whenever I was studying and reading about that, that's feces. He had doo-doo all over him, okay? That's as vile and vulgar to the Jewish people as possible. He would be put without the camp. He would be considered unclean for a long time, okay? But look at what Jesus has to do on that. It says, and he say, answered and spake unto those that stood by him, saying, take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him, he said, behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee. And I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Now, it's not only going to be clothed with change of raiment, we'll be clothed with change of heart when we put our faith, trust, and hope in him. He transforms us from vile, wicked nastiness into clean pureness, okay? Mind, body, and soul. And I said, let them set a fair mitre upon his head, or that's a, a clean turban, so they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments, and the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, or admonished him, admonished him, saying, um, admonished unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt keep my courts and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. And what's he telling him to do? Put all you got into it. Trust me with all your, all your mind, body, and soul. Spirit with an humble heart, serve me. Okay? Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, 
for they are men wondered at. Behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. He's bringing forth Jesus, okay? Jesus is coming later. This is a picture of salvation before the fulfillment of salvation, okay? For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Why seven? Seven is the number of completion. God sees everything. He sees our heart. He sees what our intentions is. He knows that we're going to fail. Okay? I seen something the other day that really, really kind of made me feel good. It says, do not worry about not being smart enough to do what God's called you to do. He factored your stupidity in before he called you. Okay? He already knew about it. So he already knew about my stupidity before he called me and my weaknesses and all of my problems. Okay? Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of the land in one day. Now, how do you remove the iniquity of the land in one day? Whenever salvation is made complete, all iniquity is paid for. It's all gone. It's dealt with. It's not a factor anymore unless you let it be a factor by laying in, the, in it instead of going ahead and, and grabbing on to Christ and salvation. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. Now, what did the crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection of Christ do? Okay. Whenever he rose, it, whenever he said it is finished. Now, salvation is made available to every man. Okay. It's made available to the world. He came to save the world. Now, everybody, who's your neighbor? Everybody's your neighbor. Everybody's not your brother. If they're not in Christ, they are not your brother. Hate to break your heart, but they're not. They have the potential to be. They can be grafted in. Let's look at John chapter 8. I honestly thought that would take longer than what it did. I guess I didn't have as much to say as I thought I did on that. But in John chapter 8, verse 1, that's a picture, the first one of the pictures of salvation. In John chapter 8, verse 1 says, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all of the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? What sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. Now if they're going to even try to set up Jesus to accuse him, Think about how much easier it is for us, to, so much dimmer than Jesus, to be set up, to be messed up, to be put up, and to make the wrong decision whenever we're tempted and whenever we're accused and whenever we're drawn out by unsavories that are just trying to bring down our witness to try to make us less, look like less than what we really are. Because I can tell you, we really are nothing but what Jesus is in us. In my flesh is no good thing, only Christ. Right? And, but Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. And whenever I was reading that, it kind of made me feel good because sometimes folks get angry with me because I won't even answer whenever they're saying something that either I don't believe deserves an answer. Sometimes Arguing back and carrying on is not worth it. It's not worth the effort that goes into it. Sometimes you just got to let it pass. You got to entertain yourself however you have to, if it's drawing in the dirt or just, you know, humming your own song. Wouldn't you love to know what Jesus wrote on the ground? 
So when they continued asking him and lifted up, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast let him let him first cast a stone at her. So which one of you is walking perfectly? Which one of you is not a sinner? Which one of us don't jump to a conclusion and want to stone somebody that maybe has done something similar to what we've done, only a little different? And are they the only one in that? Or should there be more in there that's getting... And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. That'd be pretty good to be left alone with Jesus, wouldn't it? That's what we kind of need to sometimes strive for. Kind of let's tune everybody else out with their accusations, with their railings, with their craziness, their meanness, their hatefulness, their, their self-righteousness. And sometimes we need to just get along with Jesus and give it all to him time and again to get us through this life because we know we're not worthy. He didn't come to save the worthy, okay? He came to save the lost. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where is those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? Where are they at now? And that's kind of the way it is with a lot of things in this world. It won't last long. It won't, whatever it is that they're coming against you, if you don't crumble like a cheap paper doll, It'll go away in a little while. Because there's so many that want to come against you to see what kind of foundation you've got. Are you truly build it on the rock of your salvation, Jesus Christ? Or are you playing church? Because if you play in church, you can get washed down, washed off really easy. You can get offended and put down, put back, and you're gone. They will stone you in your place and you'll be had. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Now, a lot of folks want to stop right there. Neither do I condemn thee. But what else did he say? Go and sin no more. Do better. Girl, you blew it this time. See if you can do a little better. You don't try. Don't just blow it off and say, mm, No. Give it a good try. Live it like you mean it. Verse 12 says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. That's what it means whenever he tells us over and over. Walk in light. Don't be trying to hide a lot of things. Don't be trying to get by with a lot of things. Don't be trying to say bad things is okay. Don't be trying to justify yourself. Because we all want to do that. Well, you know, I didn't really mean it that way, didn't you? How evil are you inside? Just as rotten as me. Maybe some even worse. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Well, look at there. They didn't believe Jesus was who he said he was. Does somebody's unbelief make Jesus any less God in flesh, any less a Savior? No. Nah. You don't have to believe fire burn you, but you go jump into it, what's going to happen? Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true, for I know whence I came and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, and I judge. After the flesh, I judge no man. After the flesh, I judge no man. 
Jesus isn't judging the flesh. He's judging the spirit that dwells in us because he knows the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. How many times do we know that? Have a pure spirit. Have a pure heart. Longing to do the right things, even though we may fail. May fail. We gonna fail? You and flesh? Even Paul failed. Hmm? Even John failed, who was, what, the disciple that Jesus loved? Why would he love him if he's a failure? He loves us, not because of who we are, but because of who he is, our creator. And yet, if I judge my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. So, Father and Son, testify who I am. It's true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bear witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy Father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my Father. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. You're playing religion. You don't care anything about God. You know all of the Sunday school words. You can quote enough scripture to be dangerous, but you don't know me. You don't know God. You don't want to know God. You want to look smart in front of other people. There's a lot of religious people that can quote your scriptures out of context, misapplied, and give you some really sorry conclusions. And that's exactly what these people were doing in Jesus' day. They didn't understand the very truths of God's word that they had in their hand. These words spake Jesus in, in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him for his hour was not yet come. And you think about that, if he was not God in flesh, what would have stopped them from dealing with him right then? They, he was angering them because he was pointing out that they were not godly men as they claimed to be. They didn't even know God. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way and ye shall seek me and ye shall die in your sins whither I go ye cannot come you're going to die in your sins and you're not going to heaven with Jesus if you haven't put your faith in him if you don't know him haven't got a personal relationship with him you're not going to know the father then Jesus said then said no let me get this straight then the Jews said the Jews will he kill himself because he saith, whither I go ye cannot come he laid it out there beautifully for them, and they totally missed it. Why? Because they weren't looking for it. What we're looking for is what we're more likely to find. Are we looking for the truths of God? Or are we looking to make God fit our notion of what he should be? So many people in religions have spent years, years, trying to twist God and make God be who they want him to be. And that is so backwards. We need to be twisting and making ourselves be what God wants us to be. That's where the problem comes in. That's where the fighting in religion comes because we're all seeking together God's will, God's ways, trying to make ourselves more godly instead of trying to make God fit our mold better. You know, I want a God that's going to do like I tell him to. I want the God that's he got the genie in the bottle. I rub and he comes out and I say, you know, I really need some help. I need a few more dollars. I need a few more cars. I need, you know, I want, I want, I want that prosperity God that so many people want. Very few people, if they'll admit it, really want a Lord and Master that's going to protect and guide where we need to be how we need to be and how we need to live. Don't want anybody to tell me anything. Don't want a savior because I'm busy rolling in my sin. And 
And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath. What Jesus said, You're from beneath, and I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. So many times Jesus tells them who he is. He tells people over and over. He's from above. He is God in flesh. He's here to save us from ourselves. To remove the enmity between us and him. Verse 24 says, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Who is that? He, Christ, the Christ, the Savior. If you don't believe on him, you will die in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world these things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then Jesus, then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, and then ye shall know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as the Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he, he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Remember I was reading out, I was thinking, you know, we're never left alone. If we put our faith, trust, and hope in him, we have an indwelling of the Holy Spirit. He is there to uplift us, to carry us through, to get us by whatever's going on. We're not alone. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Verse 2 says, Set your affection on the things above and not the things of the earth. It's so easy for us to get totally focused on what's going on in this flesh and not be focused on the spirit. Verse 3 says, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ was, who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. That's a comforting thought. Are we risen in Christ? Have we got our faith in Christ? I was, I hate to break y'all's neck jumping scripture to scripture, but Hebrews chapter 8, or chapter 13, verse 8, still one of my favorite. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, that's back when he was there with Zechariah. And today and forever. So when is it that Christ is going to change? No. He ain't going to change. He don't care about a prosperity gospel, a warm and fuzzy each and year gospel. He cares that people are being misled by it. But he's not going to adhere to it. Just because a group of, um, how should we say this nicely, a group of um, people get together, religious people get together, and they make a decision for God. And they can pump out whatever they want to. They still are not going to change God's mind. They, man can authorize anything they want to in their, in their religious groups and decide that God's okay with it now. But as we were seeing in Jesus' day, just because they're religious leaders does not mean they're speaking for God. It does not mean they even know God, being religious leaders. I've heard some that are supposed to be great religious leaders talking on the TV, and I think, you know, have you ever read the Bible? Have you ever, have you ever even prayed to a true and living God? How did you get there? 
why, how did you get there? How did you become a great religious leader or renowned as a religious leader and you haven't got a clue about the truth of a true and living, loving God? Well, it shouldn't be no mystery because these folks had done it. Back in Jesus' day, they're always going for the power grab. <laughs> Look at verse 9. And let's, let's all that are truly seeking Christ know this. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. They're everywhere. They're going to try to teach you stuff that's ridiculous. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat, which serves the tabernacle. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin and are burned without the camp. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Everything is a picture pointing to Jesus from the Old Testament all the way through to his ultimate sacrifice of himself. And if anybody ever wonders, he's the only human sacrifice he's ever allowed. And that was himself, a body he created. He made himself a body to dwell in, to be the sacrifice. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach for here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come when he comes back. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Now, there's where a lot of us get off. We stop praising him. We get confused. We get worrying. We get drug off about, you're not good enough to be one of his. You're too mean to be a pastor. I've been told that. Yeah, you're too mean. You're too mean spirited to be a pastor. You're too fill in the blank that somebody's going to tell you to bring you off. You can't really be a Christian because, well, wait a minute. Who is it that left you with the Lamb's Book of Life? My name's written in. You don't have an eraser for that. Okay, you didn't write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. You can't take it out. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Okay? So somebody else's opinion, okay, is not going to bring me down. I'm going to give it to God. And whenever he gives me the notion that I'm to do whatever he told me to do, I know within myself I'm not good enough. I go ahead and realize that. And with an humble heart, I ask him to guide me with anything that I need to do. Anybody that I need to share with, anybody that I need to uplift, because I am ornery, you know? I'm not naturally a nurturing, uplifting person. I have to let go and let God. I can't, within myself, be a really nice person. I can't really love within myself somebody else. It has to be through Christ. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You know? What is this all about? Our filth can only be cleaned up by Christ. How the world views us is not going to affect how Christ views us. It's not going to affect how he cleans us up. We don't need to go out there and try to make the world hate us. We don't need to go out and pick a fight for Jesus the way some people do. But to live a true and a loving life, uplifting like we're supposed to, and even uplifting ourselves. And not, it's like I've said before, we are our own worst enemy. And you look in that mirror, that's your worst critic right there. And that's the one that Satan has used the, the most to accuse you to bring you low, to stop you. And you need to just shut up because nobody cares. Well, you know what? He wants you to shut up because somebody's listening. 
If you shut up now, somebody may get saved. They may put their faith and trust in Christ, in Christ alone. They may call on him to be saved. And you were shut down because your feelings was hurt whenever he told you that you wasn't worthy. Don't let it happen. Put your faith in Christ. <laughs>